Good morning, Grace Church. It's nice to see you this morning. I just wanted to sit outside uh, this morning. It's a beautiful, gorgeous, sunny morning this Saturday morning, and I just wanted to, uh, to be out here. And so my apologies if there's points that being too much background noise, but this was, seemed to be the best place to be, uh, even just to, to share this devotional time together this morning. Uh, and as I was thinking about what I wanted to share, my mind actually had gone back uh, to some scripture reading that I'd done a while back earlier in this year. And in particular, uh, towards the end of the book of Genesis, uh, if you will. And the thing that struck me, it comes out of this moment where we know how uh, God has provided safety for Joseph, and Joseph is now in Egypt, and then his, his brothers are, are really having to look for food because of the famine that's in the land. Remember, there was the seven years of plenty, then there's the seven years of, of, of famine that's consuming all of that, and God provides it. Now they've come to Joseph. And, and here we see how even these evil things that they've done in the past ha has led to this point where Joseph is now able to provide for, um, for his family and for the safety of many. But there's one particular part that always strikes me as, as funny. Uh, and, when it, and it gets to this part where they're bringing Jacob into Egypt, right? And, and here he is. He's finding out that his son, who he thought was dead, is, is still alive. He's following all of his, his sons and the things that they're bringing to Egypt. And he gets this opportunity to meet Pharaoh. And, and so they bring Jacob in to meet the ruler of the land, the king of this entire land that's wealthy, that everybody's going to, uh, looking for supplies at this point. And it says this, then Joseph brought, by the way, this is Genesis chapter 47. Then Joseph brought his father Jacob and presented him to Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Jacob, how many years have you lived? He says, how old are you anyway? And Jacob says to Pharaoh, the years of my sojourning are 130. Get this, few and unpleasant have been the years of my life, nor have they attained the years that my fathers lived during the days of their sojourning. And it just blows me away. Here you've got Jacob, uh, who's being brought in to visit with the king in the midst of God's provision, finding out that his son, who he thought was dead, is now alive. Uh, not to mention, I mean, let's go back. This is the same Jacob who managed to rob Esau of his birthright, who fled for his life, yet God met him in the desert and said, I am going to protect you and care for you, who, who takes up residence with Laban and his family, and God continues to provide for him, who meets the, his dream woman, Rachel, and he winds up marrying Leah as well, but he is blessed beyond belief. I mean, he has all of these children to the point where when he goes back and he meets Esau, you know, he's, he's stringing out all of the blessings ahead of him, you know, so that Esau encounters each of this step by step by step, just playing out his wealth in front of everything. And, and here he is now at the end of his life, he looks back on the whole thing and says, you know what? My life has been miserably short and full of misery. I didn't even last as long as my father's did in the desert. And I'm just struck by the human ability to somehow completely forget God's blessings. To, in, the, in the midst of whatever challenge, sometimes even in the midst of a blessing, this is in the middle of a blessing, that he completely misses, fails to apprehend the blessings of his life. Few and lousy have been the days of my life. And I thought, man, you know what? That's something that's really easy for, for me to do. It's really easy, I think, for us to get so caught up in looking back on our lives that we don't see the way that God has continually protected us and provided for us. And this isn't just a COVID thing. We have to get past that and realize, you know what, life is going to move on. There's bigger things than that. This, this is about life in general. That God has, has been blessing us our entire lives. And I want to turn to Psalm 103, I think, as an as a even better uh, understanding because I mean here we're looking at all the blessings of life and you look at say whether you have a house or an apartment or whether you're warm or you're fed you know all of this sort of stuff that's in our life and say doesn't God bless you but there's even bigger blessings than that that ought to not just be present in our recollections they ought to dominate our recollections Psalm 103 says this bless the Lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons 
all your iniquities. Well, that's just the start. It's a, look at this. It's not, not just bless the Lord, oh my soul, because he gives me stuff. Not just bless the Lord, oh my soul, because, well, the sun shines or, or because today's another day or, or those things. It says, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Why? Because regardless of all the things that I do and the ways that I can abandon him and fall short, he forgives me my iniquities. You kind of have to ask yourself, what more do we need to be grateful? What, what more do we require to reflect with joy on life, on, on what God has provided? He goes on to say, who heals your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, who satisfies your years with good things. And so, yeah, now we're talking about all of these incredible things that he's given us so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. The Lord performs righteous deeds and judgments for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the sons of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in loving kindness. That's worth giving thanks for. Aside from the stuff and the things is that he is gracious and slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. In other words, he's not dealing with us on the basis of our sin, and he's not making sure that we wind up feeling the full force of every one of our shortcomings. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. Just as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he himself knows our frame. He is mindful that we are but dust. So this morning as we reflect and we get beyond our circumstances and even this moment of COVID, let me ask you, what have you got that's worth thanking God for? Sure, we're going to be surrounded by blessings every which way. But beyond that, what about His grace? What about His love? What about His forgiveness? What about His loving kindness? Those should be enough. And I pray that they are for you. God bless.